Modern Warfare 2's mid-season update is coming this upcoming week, and with it, we're getting that handful of content that we've discussed on the channel already, but today I want to take a look at a different side of the game, talk about some things that we don't quite have just yet that perhaps hopefully could be coming with the update, and even if they aren't, they definitely need to be added, either on the feature side of things or on the fixing side with bugs and other issues. But I want to take some time today and let you know about a large number of big things that are still absent in Modern Warfare 2, so as we go along, drop your thoughts below. What are you hoping to see added of these, if any at all? Whatever the case, drop your thoughts, and if you enjoyed the video, you found it at all insightful, do me a favor and drop a like on it, and if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe to stay today with all things Modern Warfare 2, Warzone 2, and DMZ. And finally, today's video is brought to you in part by my friends at Apex Gaming PCs, but more on them in a bit. For now, let's talk about some of the stuff here that we're still missing in Modern Warfare 2. First, for the understanding of this discussion, we gotta talk a little bit about what we know is coming. With Season 1 Reloaded, it's already been detailed that we'll end up seeing two sort of feature sides of things here on a more user end perspective, not necessarily affecting the gameplay itself. One is the new groups feature that will be added into the social menu for Modern Warfare 2, allowing you to invite up to 5,000 players into a single group based upon a various number of different interests, game types, and things like that. So, pretty cool feature to be added in, but again, it's something that I still think there are more pressing issues than adding this into the game. But we also will end up seeing combat records being added into Warzone. One thing that was a sort of catch with that is that we don't have anything from November 16th up until the update of December 14th. None of that time, none of those stats that you ended up accumulating in that time will track going forward with that combat record. So there's no retroactive stats that will be saved for that combat record. It's a clean slate with Season 1 Reloaded. So again, for better or for worse, that's something being added in. But is it the most pressing issue? Probably Probably not to some people. But with insiders having mentioned that there's lots of quality of life changes coming with this update, how much more can we expect and what should we be hoping to see with this? I'm undoubtedly going to miss a bunch here, so if you think of something that you think needs to be added into the game here that is currently missing, feel free to let me know down below in the comments. Feel free to chime into the conversation, but let's start out basic. Let's start with stability fixes. Crashing is still a major issue. On console, it may have been ironed out a bit more, but for PC, it's still pretty abundant. Me personally, I'm crashing at minimum once a play session, but usually about like three to four, sometimes even five and up. Whether that comes down to figuring out stability with drivers and their partners at NVIDIA or AMD, or if it's an in-house issue, those things absolutely need to be fixed out because if you want people to be playing your game, they absolutely need to be able to play the game and stay on the game. Additionally, I think a number of UI reworks or at the very least ironing out could be something we can bring to the table in terms of discussion. I mean, you still have things on the basic UI standpoint where you'll back out like twice, whereas you hit your back button once. Things like that and create a class where it will kick you out two steps instead of one. Custom games will still kick you out fully to the main menu instead of just back to the private match menu. We need a UI countdown for XP tokens, man. I mean, this one, this one's so minor and it's just a basic thing. I mean, I see no excuse for why we've gone a month and a half nearly without one. So fingers crossed that gets added. Your first create a class slot will sometimes remove all your attachments on your weapons as well. So the there's just these weird things in the UI that definitely, again, at the very least, need ironed out and fixed out so that they don't happen anymore in a problematic sense, but also to be able to rework some of this stuff would be great. I know that the UI is not everybody's cup of tea, and while it's unlikely that they'll end up reworking the entire user interface, it's something that one can maybe hope for that, right? Now, talking about some features that I definitely want to see added in here and that are still missing, the biggest one that I can think of, or one of them, is gun blueprint saves. Whenever you end up making your own custom builds, you have no ability to save that. And that's an especially important thing this year in particular because you have weapon tuning. It's one thing to have to remember from class to class about five attachments, but when you potentially have 10 specific values that you need to tune attachments to across your builds, it might create more hassle than not to just create a simple class. It might be more trouble than it's worth and would discourage players from using a specific weapon or specific build at that point. Also, one thing that I don't get in terms of kind of tying back into the gun blueprints and also to the sort of UI, what's with the blueprints that are pro-tuned that you can buy that you have no idea to see what that pro-tuning is and if you remove that attachment or alter it at all, you lose the pro-tuning across the board. That doesn't really make much sense to me. Another feature that I think is integral here that I still don't quite know why we don't have is leaderboards. I mean, we got a combat record, but we still don't have a genuine leaderboard just yet where you can track across your friends, across the global player base, across whatever platform you're on. It's just not there. And for some reason with Infinity Ward games, no leaderboards is kind of a recurring theme here. It's kind of a staple that they are, for whatever reason, behind the eight ball on releasing a leaderboard. Infinite Warfare, Modern Warfare 2019, if I'm not mistaken. So fingers crossed we get one of those here. I think that'd be something that a lot of people could get behind. Another thing that needs some work, and again, surprisingly, we haven't really seen anything advertised since I think the beta in relation to this is 
Well, spawns. Spawns, I could genuinely say so much about spawns. We touched on it recently in passing in a video a couple of days ago, so I don't really want to harp on it too much, but truly, I probably have like six, seven, eight to maybe even like a 10 minute video that I could probably make of just straight up clips of me getting spawn killed. Maybe at the most being generous with some of that, it's like walking out of your spawn for like three to four footsteps, but others, it's just straight up. I die as soon as I spawn. So having that many clips in such a short span of time across ground war, across multiplayer 6v6, it's just, I can't believe we haven't really seen anything fixed out with this just yet. So I'm really hoping that we get something with spawns ironed out and adjustment made with this mid-season update. Again, we haven't really heard anything to my knowledge or off the top of my head since the beta when we saw any adjustments here with this. Now, there's a few more things that I want to touch on here, but real quickly before we jump into that, I want to take a quick second and let you know about today's sponsor, Apex Gaming PCs, a performance-based build company that has some great deals with Code Espresso going on right now. Following the sales for Black Friday and Cyber Monday and the rest of their holiday sales, you can still pick up a few good deals on their site if you're looking to upgrade any hardware or get something for yourself from that gamer who you know that is looking for an upgrade. Linked below are a line of three baseline PCs that they've built out for the community, all of which can be fully customized. But if you're interested, Code Espresso can save you a few hundred bucks off your order. Check the link in the description below if you are. But for now, back to the regularly scheduled content. Now, next up, I definitely think that perks need some work here, and hopefully we'll get some quality of life changes in Warzone 2 and Modern Warfare 2's Season 1 Reloaded update. Now, for multiplayer, the bonus and ultimate perks actually don't show in kill cams, and this is one of those ones that might not necessarily affect you that much, but for whatever reason, it bothers me every time I come across it. I bring it up because at least once a play session, I'll get a wildly odd death that, like, I can't tell if I should have anticipated it because the UAV is just delayed. The UAV isn't entirely accurate this year. I mean, that issue with ghosted players still showing up on the UAV with suppressors even, that still is an issue that hasn't been ironed out. So the UAV is an odd one, but I also don't know if it's the UAV messing up or if the player just had ghost equipped, but I just won't ever know because they're not listed in the kill cams. Also, there's a perk display issue if you swap mid game. That ultimate perk will give you what you swap to, but it will still showcase that previous ultimate perk selected. And in Warzone, well, perks just really don't work all that much in Warzone, especially the ultimate perks. They genuinely don't work unless you have the default classes selected, like not any of your custom classes, but the pre-built ones. Those are the only classes that end up having ultimate perks that work in Warzone if you pick up a loadout. You cannot customize your perks as well in Warzone, which is... I don't know if that's a bug or a feature. I don't know if they've ever really come out on record and said one way or the other, but I mean, one would hope that you'd be able to customize your perks, right? So you still can't customize that. Fingers crossed that those things are adjusted in quality of life. Then for Warzone in particular and quality of life stuff, looting needs a lot of work. From all the loot just dropping on top of each other to making it incredibly hard to grab from what you want fast, and then those interaction notices not being intuitive at all. I mean, you can be looking right at a backpack and it'll still be trying to tell you to pick up the ammo or something like that. Getting that ironed out, I think, is paramount. Also, in terms of loot, Backpacks? Why can't you loot a medium or large backpack? To me, that makes zero sense in my opinion that it's a one-use thing here if it's intended, and if it's not, well, hopefully that gets ironed out. If it is a one-use thing by intention, that's just weird because, I mean, that's on the same level as the post-nerf specialist bonus that we ended up seeing in Warzone 1, where if you ended up dying with that, it didn't drop and other players couldn't pick it up. So one of those things is way more valuable than the other, if you ask me. Anyways, beyond that, coming back to some hopeful features that we end up seeing that are still missing, let's talk about a few modes. In Warzone, Plunder still has not made its introduction here just yet. A lot of people don't know if Plunder will be coming within Warzone 2, but with it being such a big focal point of Warzone 1, while I didn't play it, the audience for Plunder was massive in Warzone 1. So to neglect that and not bring it back would just be odd. So like, when would that be coming? Also, for 6v6 players and traditional multiplayer, where's true hardcore? Tier 1 is not hardcore. Any hardcore player will tell you this. While it is nice, you can still absolutely grind out your camos and such with ease. That's how I finished a lot of my challenges, especially the long shots for like pistols and such like that. It's still not true hardcore. It's more of a realism with modifiers from Modern Warfare 2019. So, will we get a true hardcore mode? I mean, fingers crossed. Then also the one thing that I want to talk about is solos, duos, and quads for DMZ. While I have jumped in recently to DMZ and been playing with my trio squad, it doesn't affect me all that much. But at the same time, there's a few challenges that I'm so far behind my friends on DMZ that like, I don't want to hold them back. I could be like, hey, I'll just jump in and do these things while you guys do whatever. I'll progress and catch up on my own. But at the same time, 
well, I'm in a 1v3 situation if I end up coming across a squad, which is never really too favorable. So fingers crossed we end up getting that stuff for the solos, duos, and quads out there that want to play DMZ, but don't want to either go down a man or two or lose a man if you're a quad by having to play trios. Now, the final thing that I want to talk about is perhaps the biggest thing, the biggest feature, the biggest function in the Call of Duty scene right now that we are missing, that's communication. Infinity Ward has been very quiet in regards to what they tell us and when they tell us things. Honestly, at this point, it kind of seems like we're getting communication just patch notes to patch notes, seasonal update to seasonal update. Nothing really in between that keeps players at least, while they don't necessarily need to know every inner working of what's upcoming, the acknowledgement of issues, the acknowledgement that players may be having something that they want to hear about touched on, that's a sigh of relief for a lot of players. It makes it seem like we're on top of it, we care what is happening here for your gameplay experience, and we're working to help iron that out. I get that running a AAA title here, it's something you have to go through a ton of red tape, whether that be Activision legal, whether that be just making sure everything is accurate, I get it, but at the very least, I just want a little bit of communication, something that just keeps the players in the know. But for now, that's what we're going to call it. That is the missing features, bugs, and fixes that need to be ironed out and things that I can think of off the top of my head ahead of Season 1 Reloaded. Will all of these things be taken care of? Probably not. One can help, sure, but I wanted to bring these to your attention if you guys were at all wondering what's the status on some of these things. But for now, that's what we're going to call it. I'd love to get your thoughts and feedback down in the comment section down below. Again, is there anything in particular that you guys think I missed that you would throw into this list? Whatever the case, feel free to let me know. But if you enjoyed the video, you found it at all insightful, do me a favor and drop a like on it. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a single thing running all things Modern Warfare 2, Warzone 2, and anything COD related. For now, though, thanks so much for watching. Mana's Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.